So you go to the job interview, and the interviewer says, Mr. Singh, Ms. Kaur, I have 50 other people who would love to get this job because we're hiring somebody to be a junior level software developer. We're going to spend a lot of money training you. Why are you telling me that I should hire you, not one of these other candidates? And Ms. Kaur's answer is, Mr. Interviewer, thank you for asking that. And this is a great company, and many people love to work here. But you should realize that at Lambton College, I was trained in a very powerful, in fact, the most commonly used in the world, software development methodology called Unified Process. And the interviewer wants to probe your knowledge, so they say, wow, that's very interesting. I saw that on your resume. Actually, that's the reason why you're here. Can you tell me about it? You say, Mr. Interviewer, thank you for the question. As you know, Unified Process is a software development methodology. That means we take the requirements right from the beginning, we go and interview the users of the system that we're going to be building, and we write up all of their requirements into something called a requirements document, and then we study the requirements document, and from that we generate a set of use cases. And Mr. Interviewer, as you know, a use case is a short, concise description. In fact, usually we write it on a little 3 by 5 index, uh, inch index card <clears throat> because we want it to be very short and very to the point. And yes, you can use software applications like Rational Rows or Visual Paradigm, but our professor at Lambton said the best way is to write it out on paper because that way you're not spending your time playing with the computer. You're spending your time thinking about the business domain problem you're trying to solve. So you take the requirements document and then you look for actors, and that doesn't mean Jennifer Lopez or Brad Pitt. An actor in the sense of a software system is a person, or it could be a non-human, right? It could be a traffic light. A traffic light could be a uh, actor. Another computer system could be an actor. An actor in unified process is anything which is outside the system, and it controls the system. Like, think about a traffic light. I have an intersection, I have cars going left, right, up and down, and the drivers look at the light. If it's red, they stop, and when it goes green, they proceed. So the traffic light meets all of our requirements of being an actor. It's external to the system, and it controls the system. Or think about Amazon.com website. I have a website. It's going to sit there forever and never do anything till a user shows up, searches for a book, selects it, puts it in their cart, pays for it, and gives shipping information. So a use case must have three things. Actor with goals, they're trying to do something. So the Amazon user is trying to purchase a book. And then the workflow, which is how does the actor implement or do the algorithm of getting their goal to happen. So a unified process. Interview users, generate the requirement document, read through the requirement document, pull out all of the use cases you can find, and the way you look for them is when you see somebody who's trying to do something, that's probably an actor. But to be an actor, they must have a goal. So, Mr. Interviewer, suppose I was hired by the library, and I go there and I say, Mrs. Librarian, I'm, I'm uh, Simran G. Kaur from the, the computer company. We're here to analyze your system and build a good uh, computer application for it. So can you tell me, your user stories tell me all the things you do all day long here at the library and how do they work. And librarian says, well, we have patrons, we have customers who come into the library all day long. Is a patron who walks into the library an actor? They could be, but not yet, because unless we know what they're trying to do, if somebody walks into the library to use the computer or use the community room or use the take out a book or search for a book, that makes them an actor because now they have a goal and once we know their goal, we can write their scenario or their workflow of how they're doing their goal. And an actor with a goal and a workflow, that makes a use case. And an application of typical real world complexity, if you're at work doing something for a real situation, you might have 40 to 50 use cases, right? If you're Amazon.com, you might have a couple of a couple hundred use cases. Now, what do I do once I get my use cases? I turn them into UML diagrams. So a UML diagram is a little picture, and it shows me the name of an artifact in the system. And we'll talk about artifacts in a minute. But it tells me the name of an artifact, and it tells me the data associated with that artifact, 
and it tells me the methods or behaviors that that artifact wants to do or needs to do. And then we generate code from our UML because in an object-oriented system, we have objects and the objects have data and they have methods and they also have a unique identity. So the name of the UML entity, we directly generate that one-to-one -to, -one to objects in our software system. So Mr. Interviewer, that's why you should hire me because I know how to do this. Anyway, I'm going to go and wrap up this video now and I'll kick you out the link and then um, and then we'll go and talk about what all that stuff means. But now I've given you some pre-thinking, right? Some pre-framing. Let me just go and enter my video first. <laughs>